Hey, what's up? Jack here with DevSlopes.com. A big welcome back from the South. Today we're going to do something kind of exciting. We're going to jump ahead, fast forward just a little bit. We're going to actually create our first API. Uh, now this isn't going to involve the fake JSON server that we did in the, the other lesson in the intro. Uh, we're actually going to create an API. Now we haven't even been through JavaScript basics yet, and there may be some of this stuff that you don't know unless you're have some experience with JavaScript and Node. But I want you to follow along, go ahead and type all this into your text editor, lay the project out, get it to run on your system. We've already installed most of the requirements. Get it to run and then play around with Postman and make requests. This is gonna kind of get you uh, ahead of the game and kind of get you familiar with what we're doing. Even if you don't understand it all yet, it'll start to kind of make more sense if you'll do this along with me. So this is basically a hello world example as we do in most programming languages, but this is gonna be an actual hello world code along API. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my terminal here and I'm gonna change directory to my desktop. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder and we'll just call it, um, Hello API dash code along. So now that I've got my directory created on the desktop, let's go ahead and change directory into it. All right. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and initialize our project. So we'll do npm init. And I'm not going to just accept the defaults here um, on some of them I will, but we're going to go ahead and fill this in. I'll just leave the project the way it is, the name. Version's fine. Description. I'll just type in a quick uh, description here. Uh, entry point. I'm going to change that. Um, we're actually gonna call our entry point server.js. Uh, test command, I'll leave blank. Get repository blank, keywords blank. Author, I'll just put my name. And email, license we'll leave alone. And then here's our package.json. Is this okay? Yes, I'm gonna hit enter. So now if we look, we've got our package.json file. And here it is, we don't have any dependencies set up yet. That's the next thing we're gonna do. <clears throat> so we need to install some dependencies. And off the bat, I know, let's see, we're gonna install, and we're gonna go ahead and give it that dash, dash save flag so that we save those in the package.json file. I know we're gonna need express. Uh, express is our, um, application that's going to allow us to create this uh, this api along with node we're also going to need a body parser and we're going to need mongoose so body parser is a package it's an npm package that will allow us to grab the data from the body of a post request so that's what we need body parser for and then Mongoose is the package that will let us interact with Mongo in a very nice way. It makes it a lot more simple than uh, if we had to do it manually. So there's our packages that we're going to need for now. Um, I've got the dash dash save in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter or return and let those install. Okay, so we've got all of our uh, dependencies installed. If we take a look now... At package.json, you see we've got body parser, express, and mongoose in there. So now we're ready to actually start writing some code. So I'm going to pull up Adam here. <clears throat> and I'm going to go up here and say add project folder. And I'm going to go to my desktop and into our hello API code along and open that folder. So here's our project folder. We've got node modules. These are all the modules that installed just by those 
three packages that we installed. There's a lot of dependencies there. Hit install that. Here's our package.json file. All right. Um, okay, we're good to go there. So let's go ahead and create a new file. And we're going to call this server.js. All right, server is going to be, this is going to be a fairly simplistic application. It's going to be full featured. It has Mongo support and data models and everything. But server.js, we're going to do most of our work in there because it, it is going to be kind of a simplistic application. Uh, normally, uh, when, and when we get to, to creating our main API in this course, we're going to split um, a lot of the work out into a bunch of different files and use require and imports and things like that to build the application. It's always good to split things out when you can. But we're gonna do most of our work in this single file here. So, and also a side note, we're gonna do most things in just normal JavaScript. We're not gonna worry about getting into a lot of ES6 features right now. Uh, ES6 will come when we get into JavaScript basics. And then when we start building the API, I'll, sh I'll try to show you regular JavaScript and then uh, some new ES6 features and the new way to do it. But for this one, we're gonna kind of stick with the old way of doing things. So the first thing we need to do is import express. And the way we do that is we just type var express equals require express. Okay, and in JavaScript, you do have to close lines off with a semicolon. The next thing we need to do is create our app. And this is accomplished just like this. All right, and we're gonna move on to body parser. And we're gonna require body dash parser. And we need to require mongoose. And that's all we need to require for right now. Now then, uh, comments in JavaScript are similar to C-style comments. You can put uh, the double forward slashes just to comment out a line. You can put the star or slash asterisk and then asterisk slash to comment a code block. But I'm gonna put a few comments in here so we can kind of keep track of what we're doing. All right, so we're gonna configure the app for body parser. And again, this lets us grab data <clears throat> from the body of a post. All right, so to do this, we need to do app.use and then body parser.url encoded. And then we need to add some options in here. And we're gonna say extended is true. And that's all we need on that line. This is for URL encoded um, data. And then we also need to parse JSON if, it, if that's what we wind up with. So we'll do app.use body parser.json. And that's all there is to that. We've got body parser configured now. Uh, we're good to go there. Okay, the next thing to do is set up a server port. Uh, whenever we run a server, it's got to list it on a specific port. So we're going to do that next. We're just going to say, or let's see, let's make a comment here. So we're just going to say var port. Now what this line of code right here is doing is you can set environment variables. And if we have an environment variable set for the port, which is what this right here is, it will use that. If we don't have that environment variable set, it's gonna to go to this one and use port 3000. So that's how we're gonna accomplish that. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and put in a line here to connect to our database. <clears throat> so we'll just say mongoose dot 
connect and the protocol is MongoDB so it's just kind of like a URL where you have HTTP colon slash slash but you put MongoDB in front of it and then it's a pretty much a normal URL so we're going to say localhost colon 27017 if you'll remember that's the uh, port that MongoDB is listening on slash code along all right and now we're going to set up our API routes so the first thing we need to do is create a new variable called router express router is what we're going to use for a lot of the routing in this uh, while we're building this API out <clears throat> all right so we want all of our routes to be prefixed with slash API. That's the normal way to do it. So all of our routes are gonna be prefixed with slash API. So we're gonna set up uh, all of our routes to use that. So we're gonna say app.use and slash API. And the second argument here is going to be router. And that sets that up. <clears throat> so the next thing to set up, we're just going to set up a simple test route just so we can check things out. So we're going to say router.get. This is going to be a get request. And we're just going to go to the, the default root. And we need to pass in a function here. And we're going to get a request and a response. Okay, and with that request, we're just going to send a response back in JSON. And our response is just going to be message. And then the value will be welcome to our API. And we need a semicolon there. So there's our test route set up. Uh, this is just to get things started. Now, the last thing we need to do here is we need to go ahead and fire up our server. And in order to do that, we're just gonna say app.listen and pass in the port. That's all we got to do. Now it's going to, um, our app, if you'll remember, is a instance of Express. So basically we're telling Express to listen on port, which is defined here. So it'll be our either our environment variable or port 3000. So Express is going to fire up this server for us. The only other thing I want to do here It's print a friendly message to the console when it fires up. All right, so server listening on port, and then we pass in the port, so we'll know what it's what it's running on. All right, and I went ahead and saved that. Now then, let's pull up our terminal. That right there is the basics of creating your own server. So let's, uh, let's see, let me make a new tab here. First thing I'm gonna do is fire up MongoD so that Mongo is running. Not that we need it right this minute, but when we do, it'll be running. And then here, all we've gotta do is say node server.js and that's gonna fire up our server. Okay, so our server started and you can see our message here, server listening on port 3000. <clears throat> so let's just test it out. Let's pull up Postman. And let's create a request here. Okay, so our request is just gonna be a get request. We're not sending any kind of data or anything. There's no authentication. 
<clears throat> we're we're just passing in localhost three port three thousand slash API. So we'll send it and we get back a response, our message, and welcome to our API. Status 200 okay. I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool because we just did a very minimal amount of work. I mean, if you look here, we're looking at 31 lines of code with comments and spaces and blank lines. And we just created an API, even though it's very limited right now, we created an API that responds to a request. I don't know how much cooler than that it gets. Well, let's go ahead and um, make it even more cool. How about that? So we need to create a data model for our, uh, for our API. So I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to say new folder. And let's see, we'll just call this uh, app. And then inside of app, I'm going to create another new folder called uh, models. Now there's different ways you, you can structure this however you want to. It just makes sense a lot of times to put your code in, in an app folder and then to have a models folder for all your data models. <clears throat> so inside of our models folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And we're going to go ahead and do cars. Uh, or actually, we'll do vehicles. So we're going to call this vehicle.js and hit enter. So here is our vehicle file. And this is our data model. It's it's pretty simple. We're just we need to import mongoose again. And we need to create uh, another variable called schema. Which pulls off or pulls out schema out of mongoose. <clears throat> All right, now we need to create a, a new schema. So we're going to say var. And this will be capitalized on this schema here. We want to make it capitalized by convention. So we're just going to say var vehicle schema equals new schema. And then we're going to open our parentheses and curly braces. And I'm going to go ahead and close that off down there with the semicolon. Now right here is where we put our properties for a model. I'm going to set up three properties, make, model, and color. And the way we do that is we just say mo, make, add a colon, and then the type. Put a comma, and then we're going to do model. It's another string, comma, and then color. It's, an, it's another string. Now on the last one there, you don't need a comma, of course, because it's the last one. So there's all of our properties for our vehicle. The only thing we've got left to do is export this so we can pull this in from another location. And the way we do that is we say module.exports equals mongoose.model. And then we're going to pass in vehicle in, in as a string and then vehicle schema and close that off and that's our complete model right there so we'll save that and now we'll turn back to our server and go ahead and add in uh, add in our vehicle so up here at the top in our imports <clears throat> and the way we do that is we just require now this one's a little bit different uh, this isn't an npm package. This is our own file. So the way we import that is inside the quotes We need to put a dot slash for the current directory and then the folder which will be app slash models and Then the name of our file which is vehicle You don't need the dot js on there just uh, Node will know what we're talking about. We just need the uh, vehicle not the dot js and then close that off and that's all we got to do to import our model all right 
Okay, so one thing that we're going to add in here, just because we're creating a full featured API, is we're going to go ahead and put in a middleware package. And I'll try, I'll put a big long comment in here so we can kind of talk about it. So I'm going to put the middleware in right about here. So middleware can be very useful. If I could type tonight. For doing validations. We can log things from here or stop the request from continuing in the event that the request is not safe. Okay, so what we're about to put in here is we're going to put in some middle, middleware that will go, that will be used for all requests. Middleware is exactly what it sounds like. When you send a request, before it gets to the route, middleware will step in and run some process or do some validation or whatever you need it to before it moves on. Now, the way we set it up is we'll say router.use and we'll pass in a function. Now this one takes three arguments, a re request, a response, and next. Okay. And when we get there, we always need to call next. So the very last thing we'll do is we'll call next. And if we don't call next, once the request hits this function here, it wouldn't continue on. Well, the way middleware works is we want to hit this function, do some processing or whatever, and then move on to the route. So we always need to call next here. Now, if there was an error or something, we could put a uh, put an if statement in here to catch an error. And if there was, we could, you know, kick it out where it never made it to the uh, to the route. But for now, we're just going to log something to the console. So every time we get a request, it's going to go through this middleware. And we should see in our console, FYI, there's some processing currently going down. And that's just going to let us know that it hit the middleware at that point. All right. So the next thing, we need to go ahead and set up some more routes. So we've got our test route right here. So let's just go ahead and skip down a couple of lines there. <clears throat> and we'll set up our, our vehicle route. All right. So here is our first um, our first route. It's going to be slash API slash vehicles. And we're going to set up our post function first. Uh, this is going to create a new instance of a car off of our data model. And then we're going to save that to Mongo. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to cr first create a new car. So we're going to say var car equals actually it's not a car it's a vehicle so var vehicle equals actually i need to capitalize this one so we can keep keep the actual uh, model and the instance separate so var vehicle is equal to a new vehicle I'll just put a comment here. Okay. 
Now then, we need to grab those three properties and set those. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say vehicle dot make is equal to the request dot body dot make. The vehicle dot model is equal to the request dot body dot model. And the vehicle color is equal to the request dot body dot color. So there's our properties. We just created a new vehicle and we set all of the properties on that vehicle. So now we can skip down a couple of lines and we can say vehicle dot save pass in a function here, which could return an error. And then all we've got to do is we'll check to make sure we don't have an error. And the way we do that is we just say if error. And then if we get one, we'll just, uh, in the response, we'll send that error. And then outside of that block, if we don't get a, an error, we're going to send a response back in JSON. And we're just going to send message. vehicle was successfully manufactured all right and we need to close this off with a semicolon here now we don't here because we're going to continue this on uh, inside this here we've got a dot post and then next we're going to make a dot get and this function here is going to get this this get method right here is going to return all vehicles And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to say vehicle dot find. And we've got another function here. So we're going to get back either an error or the list of vehicles. All right. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll check for an error. And if we get an error, we'll send it back. Otherwise, we'll send json back and we'll just pass the vehicles back in so if we if we don't get an error then we're going to pass the vehicles back as json pretty simple and we're done with that one so we need to close that off now that takes care of the slash vehicles route now we're going to set up another route where uh, so that we can find a vehicle a vehicle by ID and also by color And we could set up one for uh, make as well So let's set up another one So we're gonna say router dot route again and here we're gonna say vehicle Slash and then we're gonna say vehicle ID We're going to indent, and this is going to be a get method or request. So we've got a request and a response here again. So here we're going to do find by ID. And this is going to find a particular vehicle. <clears throat> so here we check for an error again. Otherwise, we return the vehicle as JSON. Hope you're semi following me on this. So up here, if you look at this route up here, we, this, this route is slash vehicles. This is going to return, this get method here is going to return all vehicles. This one is where we can post a new vehicle. Okay, this route here is slash vehicle and then a vehicle ID afterwards. And what we'll do is we, we, we can pass in an object ID, which you'll see here in a minute, and it will find that particular vehicle. Now, I also want to go ahead 
and set up another one for color and maybe one for we'll go ahead and throw one in for make just just for giggles <clears throat> And you'll look, you'll see this uh, colon here. That just means that this right here is a parameter. And like right here where we've got this colon and vehicle ID, that's this parameter right here. So whatever the URL, whatever uh, follows vehicle right here, uh, it'll grab that right here. And do the search. And it'll either find something or it won't. So right here, we're passing in, this is a new route. This is vehicle uh, and then vehicle ID. This is vehicle slash make and then the make. All right. So we need, this is gonna be a get method. Okay, so here we just need to do vehicle dot find and then inside our uh, parentheses and curly braces we need to do make colon and then we need to grab the parameter make okay again that's this right here that's this parameter so we're going to query our database for the key make that's equal to this parameter right here that's passed in all right, and then we've got to go ahead and add a function in here for our next part, and we'll get either an error or a vehicle. And if we get an error, we'll send the error. Otherwise, we will send the vehicle back. And that takes care of our make. Now one more to go. We'll we'll do color. Again, that colon right there, that's our parameter right here. That's what we're looking for. Okay, and we're gonna do vehicle dot find and inside our parentheses and curly braces we're going to say color and then request dot params dot color we're going to get back either an error or a vehicle so that just auto completed because I hit a wrong key so if we get an error, let's see, we don't need that. So if we get an error, we're just gonna send that back in the response. Otherwise, we'll send back the vehicle as JSON. All right. Now then, unless I have made a typo somewhere, I think that that should be just about all we've got to do. So you see here, we're still under 100 lines of code. Uh, we've got some cool routing going on here. We've got our slash vehicles endpoint. We've got slash vehicle with a vehicle ID. We've got slash vehicle slash make with a make, and then vehicle slash color with a color. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So looking back through here real quick, I noticed that I left off a semicolon there. So let me add that and save it. Now we've still got our server running over here, but in with running our application with node and then the file name, uh, we're gonna to have to kill it and then start it back up again for it to uh, refresh. To kill it, we just need to hit Control C and that kills the server. Now, um, one thing that's very handy for development is a NPM package called NodeMon. 
And you know what? I just noticed another typo right here. Let me save that before I lose it. Okay, so there's an NPM package called Nodemon. Uh, I've already got it installed, but the way you install it, uh, you want to install it globally. So we'll do npm install dash g and then node mon m o n. And this is a very handy. Uh, a lot of developers use it. What it is is it it runs your application and it sits there and listens for changes. So if you make changes in your source and you save it, it watches that. And if it detects a save, it restarts the server for you, so you don't have to sit there and kill it and then restart it all the time. Okay, so Nodemon's done installing. So in order to use it, we installed it as a global package so you can run it from anywhere. So instead of just typing node server.js, we'll type nodemon space and then server.js and hit return. And you see now that nodemon is watching our file system and it started node server.js listening on port 3000 uh, if we make a source code change let's just say um, like right here if i just take this space out okay um, if i do that let me move this down here so you can see it when i save this you should see it restart right here so i just saved it and so you can see right here it's restarted due to changes so this is a very handy tool to use during your development. So with the server running, uh, and another thing is if you had errors uh, that were very serious, it would crash. The server wouldn't even run. So with it running, that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and pull up Postman and see what we've got. So let's first just check our test route here just to make sure everything's working. And it is, we got our uh, welcome to our API back here. So let's go ahead. We don't have any data in our database yet. Um, if we pull up RoboMongo, uh, we can see here that we don't. The database isn't even created yet because we haven't. Uh, we don't have anything in it. <clears throat> so to remedy that, let's go ahead and do a post request. Now for the post, we need to add that header. So it needs to be content type. And then we need application dot, or slash JSON. And for the body, we'll put in a raw body here. And we need, um, let's see, make. And let's see. We'll say this first one, uh, we'll do my wife's car. We'll say dodge uh, model charger. RT and then we'll say color is black okay so we've got a post request we need to enter our URL uh, local host colon 3000 slash API slash vehicles and if everything unless I've missed something that should be good let's see what happens Okay, so we got a, you couldn't see it because I didn't have the screen big enough. <clears throat> but when I hit send here, we got a response. 200 okay, and it says vehicle was successfully manufactured. Now let's take a look at our terminal here. And you can see right here our middleware is working because we got this FYI, there is some processing currently going down. So we hit the route, we know that's good. So let's take a look at RoboMongo again. And right now you see that our database still isn't showing, but if we right click and hit refresh, you can see now we've got our code along da uh, database and we've got our vehicles collection here under collection. And if I double click that, you can see we've got one document in here. It, get, it gives it an ID by default right here. It's black, Charger RT, and it's a Dodge. So we're successfully created a vehicle. So let's go ahead and pull up Postman here. And I'm going to leave this the same except I'm going to put in my pickup truck now. 
model is a Ram 1500 and it's black as well. I hit send. Successfully manufactured. Let's check Robo Mongo. And we'll right click here on the database and hit refresh. Okay, and now we've got our Dodge Ram. Uh, let's add one more and then we'll move on. We'll do my daughter. She's got a Nissan. Rogue, and it's kind of a space gray color. So we'll hit send. We got a success message back. So let's refresh and then look again. So now we've got a Dodge Charger, a Dodge Ram, and a Nissan Rogue. So our API is working, everything looks good. This is really cool. Now, then, what other routes did we put in there? So we can get a list of uh, vehicles back. So we're going to do a get request. For just vehicles and hit send. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to put the API. Okay, so API slash vehicles and hit send. And we get back all three vehicles. Really cool, really cool stuff. So if we copy one of these IDs, let's just do my pickup truck here. And copy that. And we put, let's see, what was the route for that? Okay, so it's just vehicle slash vehicle ID. So if we come back here and we take off the S, and we put a slash and then paste in that ID that I just copied from right here and hit send. We just get back my truck. So there's a query. We narrowed it down. We search by ID. Now then, let's search by color. So we've got two black vehicles and one space gray. So let's just say vehicle slash color slash black. And we've got two. We've got a Dodge Charger and a Dodge Ram. So that's working well. All right. What was the other one? Make. So we'll do vehicle slash make. And then we'll say, um, we'll look for all the Dodges. So we do that. We get the Ram and the Charger. Cool. Let's go ahead and change that to a Nissan. And we get the Nissan Rogue. So that's great. Everything is working. That is very cool. We've got a total of two files here. Our main server uh, JavaScript file is 96 uh, lines long. But you'll notice here we've got a lot of comments in here and a lot of new lines. So it's really not that much code to have all the functionality that we've got right now. Uh, and the only other thing we've got is we've got our data model. So this is the basics of creating a, a RESTful API. Uh, we don't have all the methods in here. We probably need to have a delete and maybe a put and some more verbs. But for now, get and post, they're working. We're doing some querying. Everything looks good. We'll get into some sorting later on and things like that. But this first code along, I hope you were able to get through it and get up and running on your system. Um, yeah, very cool stuff. So we're going to move on and in the next section, we're going to go ahead and do some JavaScript basics and we're going to talk about some of the features of ES6. It's going to be very quick. They're going to be short lessons. We're going to try to get through it pretty quick just to give you enough to get your feet on the ground. And then we're going to move on and start building our main API for this course. So I hope you enjoyed this to just give you a little taste of what's to come and Follow me on over to the next lesson. Let's get going.